Good morning and thank you for joining us on this call to discuss financial performance of TD Power Systems Limited for the quarter and year ended 31st March 2022. We have with us Mr. Nikhil Kumar, Managing Director, Mr. M. N. Varalakshmi, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Vinay Hegre, Head of Global Sales and Marketing, and some other of their colleagues from the management team on this call. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. Documents relating to the company's financial performance have already been uploaded on the stock exchange and company's website. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now invite Mr. Nikhil Kumar, Managing Director for TD Power Systems Limited to provide key highlights of the company's performance for the year ended 31st March 2022. Thank you and over to you Mr. Kumar. Good morning everybody. Thank you once again for joining us today on our earnings call. I trust all of you would have received our results and investor presentation. Now I would like to discuss with you TDPS financial performance for the year ended 31st March 2022. Our full year total income on a standalone basis was rupees 7.36 billion versus 5.12 billion for the same period in the previous year, an increase of 44%. Profit after tax and comprehensive income was 532 million versus a profit of 179 million for the same period in the previous year, an increase of 197%. This is the highest profit for the manufacturing business since the inception of the company. We'd also like to point out mentioned that the investment that we've been making in automation and productivity has given us good results. Our operating costs have increased only by 36 million, and the turnover has gone up by 22 billion. Clearly, we're seeing the benefits of the investments we made in increased productivity. Full year manufacturing revenues was 7.04 billion versus 4.85 billion. Exports and deemed exports contributed to 50% of manufacturing revenues with the railway business included, and 61% if one only considers the generator business. Manufacturing order book, including Turkey operation, stands at 13.92 billion, out of which 3.77 billion is a regular manufacturing business, 9.89 billion is railway business, which is executable over the next six years, and rupees 0.26 billion for the Turkey business. Export and deemed exports, in excluding the railway business, constitute around 59%. Okay. Order inflow. We are happy to increase, uh, to report a big increase in the order inflow for TDPS India from 4.7 billion last year to 6.05 billion this year. That means uh, from uh, FY21 to FY22. An increase of 22%. Full year order inflow, including the Turkey business, is as follows. TDPS India 6.05, Turkey 0.35, as a 6.4 billion, and the previous year was 4.7 for TDPS India, 0.69 for TDPS Turkey, giving a total of 5.39 billion. Order inflow from direct and deep exports was 3.74 billion, which is 62% of the total order inflow for the general business. Full year project business revenue was 173 million versus 203 million in the same period last year. Order book for the project business stands at 415 million. Consolidated. On a consolidated basis, our full year total income, including exceptional items, is rupees 8.22 billion versus 6.1 billion for the same period last year. Profit after tax, including comprehensive and exceptional income, is 614 million, including the right back of DFPS versus a profit of 437 million for the same period in the previous year. Profits have been impacted due to the foreign exchange translation loss of 75.23 million. This is a notional loss 
from our Turkish subsidiary due to the sharp depreciation of the Turkish lira to the Indian rupee from 8.84 Turkish lira at the beginning of the year to 5.16 Turkish lira at the end of the year, a drop of 42%. It is important to note that TDP of Turkey has an actual, actual operational PAT of 39.52 million INR. A control order book is 14.34 billion. We continue to maintain a strong cash position of 1.81 billion rupees. Order book, market situation and guidance. Order book. Despite the highly volatile situation in the global market caused by the war in Ukraine, high inflation and consequent interest rate increases, we are seeing a huge increase in order inflow and pipeline in Q1, FY23, the current year, compared to any time in the past. The factors driving the order inflow are somewhat different in India compared to outside India. In India, we are definitely seeing a big upswing in the CapEx cycle. The sectors leading demand are steel, metals, distilleries, cement, and other industrial sectors. In particular, there is no surplus power in India, rather a severe case of underinvestment in the power sector, which has increased the reliance on capital power plants. Power prices are at an all-time high, and unless an industry has capital power plants, it is difficult to ensure reliability of operations. Another major area of investment by the government of India is in the railways. Huge investments are taking place in this sector. We are bidding for a number of projects with our OEM partner, and with our track record, we will capture a part of this market. Exports. The war in Ukraine has increased the focus on renewable power, based to energy, biomass, hydro, and geothermal. We are well positioned to capture business in all these segments. At the moment, small gas engines and turbines are also very popular to avoid the current high power prices, especially in Europe. Industries are buying gas in the open market and installing small capital power to mitigate the high uh, prices of power. In the end, it is about cost of power and dependence on the utilities that is driving the growth. In the US, the fracking industry is staging a big revival, and we hope to get more orders from the mobile power unit. We're working with both the major gas turbine manufacturers in this segment. Hydro, the market is picking up. We have a current order book for FY23, more than what we executed in FY22. So we will most certainly grow the sales of hydro in FY23. All hydro sales are 100% export. We would also like to report that we have acquired a new OEM from Germany that has given us an order for three large vertical generators. The aftermarket business is also doing well for TDPS. Every year, more and more generators get older and need spare parts and replacement. We are seeing a good number of orders already for H1. Market situation for the current financial year. We have, as mentioned earlier, extremely strong order inflow for the month of April and also for the month of May till date. Both export and domestic markets are doing well with strong pipelines. We will also see the full effect of price increases that we negotiated last year in the gross contribution of the company in this financial year. In addition, we have hedged the euro for almost the whole year's business at good rates, so we will not suffer any gross contribution loss due to the recent weakness of the euro. We have also purchased a significant amount of steel, copper, and other materials to secure margins and de-risk the raw material impact. Our railway customer has also increased the forecast for this current financial year. The management is focused on increasing the cost, uh, growth contribution by combination of pricing, cost reduction, and increased productivity by investments. This year, we will invest 22 crores only on automation and other areas in the factory, as well as in the office. Coming to guidance, we're giving an initial guidance for TDPS India for a top line of 8.2 billion plus. We will have fairly consistent quarter on quarter performance, but as always, Q2 and Q4 will be stronger compared to Q1 and Q3. TDPS Turkey will have an approximate top line of 0.3 billion and the total manufacturing business will be giving an initial guidance of 8.5 billion plus. The project business will have a top line of around 0.4 billion. All our subsidiaries are 
will be profitable in this financial year. This brings me to the end of my initial remarks. I will now be happy to answer any questions and queries that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. A request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, hi, Ravi. Hi, sir. Uh, Thank uh, you, Ravi. Ravi, sorry to interrupt you. May I request yeah. you to speak through the handset? Yes, sir. Hello, uh, is it better now? Yes, thank you. Yes, sir, we go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes, sir, uh, you had talked about a significant increase in the overall uh, inquiry pipeline uh, for this year. Uh, uh, you are seeing very good demand from the metal space and other sectors. Can you just quantify as to what would be the uh, increase in inquiry pipelines that we have seen in the domestic market and also the export market in terms of addressable market? Uh, how 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 large uh, is the inquiry pipeline as it's grown year on year? Yeah, it's a difficult question to answer, Ravi, because the inquiry increase in the inquiry pipeline does not necessarily translate to increase in business. Okay. Uh, but at the moment, I can say it's about thirty percent more. Thirty percent more. Huh? Got it, sir. Got it, got it, got it. So, uh, this is both in the domestic and the export side, sir. So, in terms of yeah, on an average, you can say. But I would also okay. like to again caution that an increase in inquiry does not necessarily translate into increase of business. Uh, got it, sir. Got it, got it. And uh, uh, see, last year, uh, my second question is with respect to the margins, Man manufacturing margins. We had ended at the average margin of around 12 percent uh, in FY22. Uh, historically, if you have seen, uh, we had even touched 14-15% kind of margins. Uh, do you think that uh, with good operating leverage and good growth, we might even be able to touch the historical margins of 14-15% uh, uh, going forward over the next one, two years? Is that a possibility going forward? The focus of the management is to increase the operating margins. And as I said in my speech, it's a combination going to come from combination of size, uh, combination of cost reduction activities on the product, and productivity increases when we have operating leverage. So, uh, as you have seen, you know we have seen operating leverage playing a big role uh, in last financial year, despite uh, despite the fact that we had big raw material price increases and didn't have a big expansion of the gross contribution. So, uh, operating leverage, I think, played a larger role last year compared to the increase in the gross contribution because we did not have the full pass through of the raw material price increases in our margins uh, last year. And we had also given guidance to that effect um, uh, during the conference call that we had last year. Mm -hmm. Now, as, as I, I also mentioned, that we will see pass through starting to take place in Q4 of last year. And that we have seen, if you see the uh, gross contribution level from of Q4, you will see it is higher than the average of the, it, higher than the average for the whole year. So uh, that gives, a gives, gives an indicator of what can be achieved, let, 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 let me put it that way. And uh, the, as I said, the management's focus is going to be in the combination of three factors, Price, cost reduction, productivity increases. And uh, with respect to the uh, railways business, uh, in the presentation it was mentioned that uh, a lot of spends are happening with respect to railways. Uh, can you talk about that also in terms of opportunities uh, 
direct supplies to railways etc as you can and do some you on that yeah there are there are three there are three basic there basically three opportunities one is an expansion of our existing contract itself that is under negotiation with the indian railways uh then there is another tender which has been announced for another project which is exactly similar to what uh, our customer has won with the indian railways so a similar size similar machine then there is all these high speed trains which we're talking about and our oem partner has has one some number of machines some number of uh, uh, trains for the high speed trains so we are right so there are a number of opportunities where we see uh, big big emphasis on investment in the railways and and of course uh, we will definitely get a part of this business and i think that the scope is huge because the amount of investment and the amount of machines they need is just enormous Sorry to interrupt you, Ravi. I'll request to do come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. I request all the participants restrict to two questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Ankit from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations, uh, Nikhil and teams for a uh, very good set of numbers. Nikhil, if you can talk about some of our new initiatives and how are how are they shaping up? You know, the motor side, the wind power refurbishment, and uh, the other initiatives that we were planning to disclose to investors in you know upcoming calls. If you can talk about uh, this initiative, how are they scaling up? Yeah, there are uh, there are. a um, uh, number of negotiations going on let me put it that way i would say that the scope of the business and the growth in the business what the growth projected is is intact uh we hope to report something to the market in the next in the next earnings call we are we are in a number of uh, final negotiations so i can't i can't say anything more so that that is good to hear and uh, nikhil on the margin front you know we have seen uh, some improvement on the gross margin side with the gross margin taking 29 30% in q3 and q4 so with the price revision kicking in and uh, the raw material uh, has been done for the entire year along with euro you think you know uh, from uh, uh, for the full year of fy23 a gross margin can climb back to 31 32% that is the goal of the management is to take the increase of gross margins to 31 to 32 what you said okay that's the goal of the management so eventually we will see uh, the ebitda margins expanding due to combination of operating leverage uh, 1 or 2% increase in the gross contribution and also uh, trying to keep the fixed costs under control these are the three factors which are going to play a role now what is it going to be in the end i think we will definitely be happy to give you accurate guidance in the upcoming quarters um but definitely we will improve our goal is to definitely improve the gross contribution and uh, not gross contribution but just over a bit the margins compared to what we achieved last year so that is very good to hear so wish you all the best okay yeah thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Pardiyai from O3 Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, congrats, Nikhil, on good set of numbers. Thank you. There is, uh, there is one thing only which is slightly troubling. Our trade receivables on the console has increased to two forty one crores. Okay, which is uh, on eight hundred crores, which is thirty percent. Okay, so nearly one twenty days of uh, receivables. Can you explain? Uh, what are we doing because because of that particular line the cash flows uh, have got impacted okay my operating cash I flows what let me ask for let me to answer this question yeah the trade receivables are generally high at the end of the quarters or at the end of the year because of the high volumes of sale which happen at the end of the month or during the month of march okay see but this will start again hmm. see collection look at happen. the there's no problem okay see if i look at the consolidated numbers now the cash flows i am talking about operating okay so this year even whenever growth has been pretty strong the operating cash flow is 10 crores okay and last year it was negative okay 
So is there something which can do to reduce this uh, receivables part? Means or is there, because no. four months is a pretty long period, okay? Even if we pay, so what are the trade terms uh, we give to the customers? Can, can you just elaborate on that part? It will be helpful. The trade term is between 45 days to 90 days or 100 days. But generally you see that most of this, uh, you know, the billing happens in the month of March. And that's why you see that the receivables are, you know, mounting very high. And we have done almost 200 crores of manufacturing business in Q4. And we also have the sales from our subsidiary. So this is, this is normal in our line of business. I, I, is a bunching I think the answer is a bunching yeah. effect, and that is the reason why you see a spike in the receivables okay. towards the end of the year, particularly. Okay. Okay. But uh, how many of the customers would be paying within 90 days for us? More than 75%. Okay. More than 75% will pay. Hmm. And one small thing, out of our manufacturing revenue, what would be uh, because of coal-powered plants uh, or the means generators for coal-based power plants? I don't have the exact number right now. I'm not sure. Okay. And are we seeing traction on the coal-based power plant, means the captive power plant, and uh, we expect we can reach back to the previous 2011-12 high in, on captive power, especially in India. And what would be, is the capex on captive power plants happening outside India also? And can we target that Vinay, market? Uh, Vinay, can you answer this question? Yeah, uh, can you once again repeat your question? Yeah, so my question was on captive power plant, both in yeah. India and outside India. So in India, we have a very strong market share in a captive power plant for small generators, okay? But uh, are we seeing a similar growth of captive power plants outside India also because power shortage seems across the globe prevalent? And what would be our strategy to gain market share in captive power plants uh, outside India? See, in India, of course, uh, there is a big uh, investment going on in the captive power plant. Outside India, it is mainly the small gas-based power plants uh, and some waste energy. There are a lot of big projects coming in the countries like Germany and UK. But uh, it is not the same as in India. Okay. Okay. And who would be our competitors for those products in developed markets? In developed markets, uh, we have uh, competitors like ABP. Brush. Okay, okay. Thank you from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from one of Vanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Nikhil. Good morning. Congratulations for a very good set of numbers. Uh, so, Thank Nikhil, you. Uh, uh, the first question is our railway order book has increased uh, significantly. And you said that the same is executable over six years. So does it mean that the 100 crore run rate will now go to 150? Is that a right way to think? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So is it because the number of machines has, you know, that we are going to supply has increased, uh, you know? Yeah, there are two factors. Uh, one is the number of machines has increased. And second factor is that, you know, there's a price variation clause and, uh, there is also an increase of the price of uh, of, of each uh, of each product of each motor that they supply to them. So it's a combination of both. Okay, okay, got it. And that is this is uh, so the hundred crore opportunity on a uh, you know railway tender remains right for which we had we had supplied some uh, trial orders. You know that see there are there are a number of business segments within the railway business. So we. Uh, and I said the Indian Railways, this, this is being supplied to a multinational company who's had who's a joint venture partner with the Indian Railways, right. where they're manufacturing these 12,000 horsepower freight locomotives, right? These are the products that we are supplying right now. Right. In addition to that, we are qualifying ourselves for the traction motors for the directly with the Indian Railways, which are used both in freight and passenger locomotives, electric locomotives. That is, as I said, a 1,000 crore market. 
proximity right. and is growing. And for that, we in that we hope to get around a 10% market share. Okay, but I think we have supplied some trial orders uh, for that, right? So yeah, we are uh, we we have produced the motors. They are under inspection with the Indian Railways, and they will be soon dispatched and then mounted on the locomotive. There will be a six-month trial period, and then we'll be qualified. Okay, great, great. Uh, and anything specific on this wind R and M? Uh, you know, any developments there? As I said uh, earlier to an earlier question, we have a number of contracts under negotiation. We hope to report in the next uh, earnings call more specific order wins. But there are a number of active uh, jobs under final negotiation. Great. Thanks. Uh, that's it for my time. Thank you. The next question is from one of Riya Mehta from Equiras Investors. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My first question was you mentioned that uh, you you uh, you know stocked up on copper, steel, etc. So just wanted to understand that you know how much uh, inventory do we usually keep and how much have we increased this to at this point in time? So we have um, normally the I mean, if we say if we say normal language, let's say pre-crisis, okay, let's say we would not have more than three months of inventory. Uh, but we would have copper bookings, not necessarily inventory, extending maybe up to six to nine months. So uh, right now we have almost nine months of inventory. Inventory. Okay. And uh, uh, the next question was that, uh, you know, sometimes like a couple of quarters back, we had uh, uh, mentioned that uh, not full capacity or optimum capacity, our revenue potential would be at about 800 crores. And given the price rise, and uh, given you know we've already touched that for uh, an FY22, where does our revenue potential stand with current capacity as we speak? Yeah, I think in the last call I had mentioned that we have uh, moved that number now to around 1,000, 1,100 crores, and uh, that's where it stands as of now. And we we we'll keep pushing it to the extent possible. Uh, year on year by you know increasing investments in automation and productivity and trying to extract more and more from the current resources we're not planning any new uh, green field projects at this point of time okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Mohit Khanna from Bandon Capital Advisors please go ahead Hello, sir, and congratulations on a very strong set of numbers here. I have two set of uh, questions here. Uh, first of all, if you just help me understand the employee expense line that has moved considerably in last few quarters. So right now, we this quarter is at 20 crores at, at a higher revenue level, and year over year it was at 22.6 crores, if I get it right. So what exactly is the nature uh, of this you know, movement? Why this happens is my first question, and then I'll come back on the second one, sir. Once I ask my uh, to answer this question, could you? You're talking about the employee-related expenses, you know, employee benefit expenses, employee re employee expenses on the control PNL. Yeah. Employee. This is twenty crores uh, for uh, this quarter. And on annual basis, it is eighty crores versus seventy-nine crores last year. No, I'm, I was trying to understand that uh, even with the higher revenue, this has come down, uh, which has improved our uh, EBITDA margin. So, is what is the nature of this, these expenses? No, it is basically so what we have done is we have not taken replacement of. Uh, no, these are these nature of the expenses is employee related. These are salaries, salaries. Salaries and benefits. Uh, benefit. Is, benefit. is it is it going to come back? Expenses is going to come back next quarter. Provident fund contribution. Provident fund contributions and the, the normal uh, employee related expenses. No, I mean, is it going to come back the next quarter because we have had a good traction due to lower expenses on margins this quarter? No, no, it will be almost the same, only you will see the inflationary cost which will um, get added at that one. See, there are, so we give salary increases every year. And there will be uh, there will be a salary increase which will also give which we already given for the FY23 to our management. And uh, it is in line with the industry, you can say, salary increases. But we will offset 
these increases with increase in productivity and with expansion of the business. So as we did last year, we will we, we will increase our sales significantly without a corresponding, you can say, or proportional increase in the fixed cost. That is that's how that's how we're going to increase our one of the areas how we're going to increase our EBITDA through operating leverage. Fair enough. Fair enough. So that was more helpful. And and when you just spoke about uh, the automation piece of that 22 crores investment that we're going to make, so is it the total capex that you are targeting for this year? Or, uh, you have the more total capex. And... No, it's the total capex, and it will be directed towards automation, both on the factory side and also on the, the management side. Uh, on management it? side, automating, automating processes so automating processes within the within the management framework. What are the expected cost savings um, that, that you are targeting internally with this? I can't uh, disclose this information, I'm sorry. Fair enough, sir. And, and this last piece, if I just push in, so for the fourth quarter, what was the growth in the domestic and the export side of the business on the revenue? We will, we will, we don't have this information offhand. It's easy for us to get it. We will, we will get back to you on that. Fair enough. Thank you so much, sir. So, shall we move on to the next question? Yes, yes, please. Thank you Thank so much, yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ambar Singhania from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, I have two questions. First is on the capacity side. As you mentioned that you are not planning any green field. We are all at 900 crore. Uh, maybe in a, in a year with this current growth rate, we will be reaching the current capacity threshold which you mentioned. So, so how, what is the further room by uh, uh, brownfield or de-bottlenecking we can grow this capacity? And uh, if at all we need to go for greenfield, uh, how long it takes for the capacity to come on stream? So, so just wanted to understand by when uh, uh, we need to plan if we are seeing this current growth rate continuing and what is the further room we have there? That is first question. And uh, secondly, just wanted to your your view on the export market given the current uh, uh, fluctuations in Western and European geographies uh, given the current geopolitical situation. How do you see the demand getting impacted uh, uh, in the future? Are we seeing any, any color or are we anticipating any slowdown in the export market potential as such? Yeah, two questions from my side. Yes, yeah, so the first question I'll answer, the second question I'll leave it to my colleague Vinay to answer. Uh, first question about Greenfield. So we have some, we have spare land also with us. We're not, we're not utilize it. So, you know, if we really have to, uh, put up a put up a factory and get it up and running in a crunch we can do it within seven to eight months uh, so i'm it, it, we don't have to really start to literally from zero to start buying land we have land um, but there is a lot that we can do within the existing uh, two factories that we have those who have visited us you can you know you'll see that we have a lot of space and there's still room to grow so uh, I'm not uh, I'm not set on putting up a green field at this point of time. We will keep pushing the limit on, on on flogging the existing assets and getting operating leverage. I think that is the focus of the management at this point of time. And uh, uh, when we really run out of capacity, as I said, we can we can we have land. We can put up another plant. I right, so second question about the increase uh, the export market and. Position where we are and how the growth is going to take place. Vinay, uh, can you please answer that question? Yeah. So export market, see, because of this Ukraine-Russia war, we have not seen any impact on our business, and uh, rather, uh, you know, it is going up because now customers uh, they uh, want to be independent of Russian gas, mainly in Europe, and uh, there are a lot of uh, waste energy power plants are coming up, and. Uh, there is no negative impact. Definitely in India, there are a lot of projects coming. Uh, there is zero effect on, in the Indian market because of the war, but uh, we see a positive impact uh, due to this uh, you know, war. So, 
So we are seeing, you know, basically there is a move that people want to get into, you know, from the larger utility side, uh, gas powered power plants, which are dependent on Russian gas and things like that. There is a lot of discussion taking place on how, if we don't buy Russian gas, how are we going to uh, generate power survive. for uh, to survive? And so there will be, of course, it's not immediately started, but there will be investment, more and more investment taking place on renewables more and more investment taking place on biomass, on garbage burning plants, on waste heat recovery. Um, they cannot hydro, they cannot do this entire replacement of the fossil fuel or the gas-based, large gas-based utility power plants. It cannot replace entirely with solar and wind. It's not at all possible. So there will be a large proportion of this replacement coming through the uh, steam turbines and we're also seeing a lot of industries in Europe, in general, trying to become independent from utilities and putting up capital power plants. So this is a trend, a general trend. Of course, you know, things can change tomorrow. And, uh, uh, but so ask me the question today, this is what we're hearing in the market. I think there's one, one small clarification, if I may. Uh, you mentioned the FY23 revenue guidance of around 8.5 billion rupees versus 8.1, which we have already done this, this year. Uh, that, that results in a less than, or, or a kind of single digit kind of growth. No, it's not 8.1. The manufacturing revenue is, eight, is 7, 7 billion. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will, uh, so TDP is India, and that will be 8.2. 7 will move to 8.2. 7 will move. And then Turkey, Turkey will have be 0.3. So it's 8.2 plus 0.3 is 8.5. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hitin from Joint Ray Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Good morning, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Good morning, sir. I, I have a clarification question. Like uh, for the guidance, you gave the guidance of 8.5 billion of manufacturing revenue for this year, right? Total manufacturing. Yes. And the current year on the console level, it's around 8.8, right? Uh, so are we seeing any degrowth in this or am I missing something? Yeah, you're missing something. About yeah. So what you're saying is on the, uh, without elimination of intersegments uh, between the companies. So okay. what we are talking is 8 point, yeah. So if you take the intercompany elimination. Okay. The manufacturing revenue will be seven eighty two. Seven eighty two. Okay, total manufacturing. Okay. Okay, okay, understood, understood, ma'am. And uh, guidance is forty crores uh, for, from uh, project business, right? Yes, correct. Okay, okay, thanks, thanks. And my other question is on CAPEX, sir. Just wanted to understand what is our CAPEX target for FY23? I think I've answered this question a number of times, but I'll say it again, it's around 22 crores. 22 crores this year, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Bannon Capital, please go ahead. <coughs> Uh, hi, uh, congratulations, Nikhil, for the fantastic kind of numbers. Yeah, hi, Rajiv. Thank you. Questions. One, yeah, wonderful. Um, on the macro side, you know, what's your take on where we are in the CapEx cycle? Uh, I think your comments on what's happening in Europe are very helpful. Uh, but if you can just also give a sense that, you know, are we in the first inning, second inning of the long games, or, you know, where, how you're seeing uh, the CapEx cycle evolve there? I think in India, it is hardly one year into this expansion, or one and a half, one, one and a half years into this uh, revival of the CapEx cycle, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's the, I hope we will have a 10 year expansion. I mean, there's a lot of space to grow in our country. So, mm -hmm. we should, I mean, I, I got, we, we should think of this thing lasting for a while. Right. Okay. 
So uh, in that context, Nikhil, do um, um, you think you will be starting to expand your capacity in fiscal year 24? Um, because as you said, you will be hitting 1100 crores of revenues um, uh, with the current capacity. And with sort of the growth that you are uh, talking about for fiscal year 23, it seems by fiscal year 24, you have to start expanding. Am I directionally? Uh, yes, yeah, I, I uh, mentioned Rajesh that look, we are we're, we're pushing the, we're going to flog the existing assets. Maybe we can answer this question right. in a better way next year around this time. And uh, okay. we have land. If we have to do it, we can do it in a crunch. So there's a sudden massive increase in the market and we, Unexpectedly seeing a lot of orders coming in, we have to produce quickly. We can put up a factory very quickly because we have land. We have uh, land mm -hmm. in neighboring. Uh, we actually have some buildings within our existing complex which are not fully utilized too. So we can also use some of that. There is there's absolutely no problem that in a case where there is a sudden expansion of demand, we have the space, we have the capacity to put it up very quickly and we will not lose any opportunity. Wonderful. Um, and my second question was on uh, Turkey. Um, so what's your sense about you know, the long term? Like I know you gave the guidance for fiscal year 23, but uh, do you think um, that this Ukraine war has it become more important to have that location? I'm uh, just trying to understand, you know, how it fits in over the long term. Turkey is going to be it's, it's a temporarily it's a market which is under some level of stress because of their financial situation of the, of the country as a whole where there's a sharp de devaluation of the, the local the Turkish lira versus the euro and dollar and also very very high inflation but the, it is an energy there is they need to invest in energy it's an energy if they have an energy shortage in the country power shortage in the country they will keep investing and uh, mm -hmm. the market will revise the team. So they, there are two. So there will be a combination of uh, locally produced generators, which we will produce from our factory over there. And because of our uh, last two or three years, where we have been the dominant player in, in the market below 50 megawatt, we have an extremely good acceptance of our brand and very good penetration in the market with all the major power producers. Um, any business that does not require a made in Turkey generator, they're offering the made in India generator. And uh, so, you know, we, we will be able to get, when the market provides, we are well positioned to get both parts of it, either made in Turkey or made in India. Thank you. Um, so, Rajesh, I'll request you to come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. I request all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Rohit Balakrishnan from iPod PMS. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Hi, hi Rohit. How are you? Hi. I'm good, Nikhil. Congratulations on very good numbers. Nikhil, uh, uh, so just a uh, couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned in your opening commentary that you've acquired a new OEM from Germany. Uh, uh, can you just talk a bit about that? Yeah, it's a... It's a hydro turbine manufacturer based in Germany, and they do a number of projects internationally. Uh, we have got the first big order from them for three vertical machines. So it's a good good start with them, I can say. Okay, got it. Uh, uh, I mean, any sense in terms of uh, what uh, can it be in terms of size or a bit too early to say? Let's. It's a. It's a. It's a, do a number of projects, and it could be a. It, I'm not going to give a number right now, Rohit. I, I sure. think that we would like to execute these projects, and then we can talk about it. But it would grow the hydro business in general for us. Sure, sure. The other question is slightly more on. I mean, there are so many uh, disruptions and so many other headwinds that we keep reading these days, and uh, we have sort of. Uh, we our outlook seems very strong. So just for you, from your perspective, from your vantage point, what are the risks that you are seeing right now? Uh, uh, so just if you could, I mean, so that uh, we can also sort of have a look on, on those. Uh, what are the risks that you see at this point of time from your business perspective? 
So I would say there is a short term risk and that would let's say we let's talk about a medium term risk. Okay, so short term when you talk about let's say short term I mean the current financial year maybe a couple of quarters into next year. So as far as this current financial year is concerned, as uh, I have mentioned, Vinay has also mentioned, strong inflows and strong uh, pipeline. We are very confident that we don't see any short term risk in terms of the numbers and projections what we are what we are giving to the market at this point of time. So the momentum will definitely carry us as far as the short term risk is concerned. Medium term. I mean, it's really difficult to say because are these interest rate increases going to cause uh, big big slow on investment? Uh, is there going to be is the war going to spill over? You know, is it going to draw in other Europe and America in a bigger way? You know, is it going to lead to a larger conflict? We don't. I can't answer all these questions. So, how is it going to impact business? Very very difficult to talk about the medium term risk. Uh, we we will. Have to adapt ourselves to whatever whatever situation comes, but we are well positioned in number of markets, and uh, what what we have right now, what we and what we have right now, and what we didn't have in the past is we have a very strong domestic market, and that I think will, will give uh, have a big cushioning effect in case something happens internationally. Got it. Uh, very helpful, Nikhil. All the very best. Uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the man of Chetan Kumar from Alpha Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you for taking my question and very good set of numbers. Sir, my question is on margins. So, as you were saying that Q4 will have better margins because we have taken price rise, but have prices risen more in January, February, and March? And so, have we or, or are we confident that margins have kind of bottomed? Um, price increases. What we have got, we have taken care of the price increases that we have seen on the raw material side up to date. So the pass through, we did not feel the pass through completely in Q4. We felt it partially. So we will see better situation emerging in the next few quarters, and we will be happy to report next next earnings call. Uh, they give you a definite, a more accurate guidance of what the EBITDA margin for the year is going to be. Sure, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Uh, my all other questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from one of Alicia Marwa from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, my first question is with respect to synchronized. Motors um, order inquiry of 200-250 crores. There was a pipeline. Has there been any con uh, conversion there, or what is the update? The update, uh, as I said earlier, is that we are in a number of final negotiations and uh, should close some orders soon. So we will keep the market informed as and when we are able to do that. What is the kind of competition we are facing in this segment? Primarily, we compete against DHL. Okay, understood. And with respect to the replacement uh, demand, we were quite bullish about it in early part of this year, especially in the wind turbine segment. Are we seeing traction there? We are seeing traction there. We will increase our overall sales and replacement business uh, this financial year. And I also mentioned in my earnings call speech that we're seeing uh, we're already seeing a good order book for H1. So it's going as per our plan. We, we're not revising it downwards or upwards. It's going as per plan right now. Is it possible to quantify what is the current contribution from the replacement market? To no, I don't uh, want to give uh, breakups of the individual components of our spare parts business like that. Sure. And but it's fine. increasing. Okay, thanks. Just one last question. Any plans to exit the Turkey business? No. Okay. So At this point of time, no. We are expecting some revival maybe end of this year, next year. We are definitely expecting a revival. And uh, there is going to be a revival. This market cannot be, this. as I said, it's a 
market is uh, they have a power shortage and it's um, they need to put up power power plants and they will okay thank you thank you next question is from line of anurag patel from roha asset managers please go ahead thank you for the opportunity so uh, are we able to include uh, escalation clauses for all the new orders we are booking now in general we have um, an escalation clause with uh, many of our customers but we also have I mean, in the sense that if there is a variation of raw material prices beyond a certain point, we will get back to the negotiating table and talk. We we have that with uh, all our major customers. Okay, so I mean, still, uh, what portion of this current order book uh, can be exposed to commodity risk? Uh, very little. I mean, I, I don't, I know, I do not know the exact calculation, but we have covered the risk largely by by hedging, by going, by, by stocking material. So we don't see a risk in terms of price increases impacting us at this point of time in a major way. Okay. And the second question is on the guidance. So does this revenue guidance excludes the revenue uh, possibility from these new initiatives you are currently discussing orders, et cetera, with the customers? Our revenue guidance is a combination of everything. And uh, if we are successful in picking up some big orders, uh, we'll be happy to we'll be happy to report any changes in the revenue guidance in the upcoming quarters that we you know and uh, when we when, when we talk to all of you as of now this is what we see we always want to give a number which we can achieve and uh, when we can achieve something better we'll be happy to report that to you okay that's it from my side thank you very much thank you the next question is from line of Aditya Mongya from Corex Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, and good, good, morning, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. And congratulations on a good set of numbers. Hi, sir. I'm, I'm doing all well. Yeah. Uh, so the question that I uh, had was, uh, uh, firstly, given the backlog where it is, what kind of manufacturing top line can you, any which we do out of that in FY23? From a manufacturing perspective, uh, Aditya, we uh, we said that we will do 820 crores from 8.2 billion from India and 0.3 from Turkey. So totally 8.5 billion on the manufacturing business. Understood. I just thought of getting a sense that this is dependent on me. Sure. Understood. Uh, the second question that I wanted to ask you was uh, from a motors perspective. And do you see the motors portfolio becoming uh, a reasonably large share of your uh, overall revenues over the next, let's say, three years also? Yes, yes. We understand. Large synchronous motors business can can be a large can can end up being a, a big segment. So, as I, I mentioned, a number of calls in the past. The market size is around 200 to 250 crores, and uh, we hope to get good for at least I don't know 30 40 percent of that market. It can become that's the size that we can hope to get. The business is there for sure, and we're seeing the inquiry pipeline. We're seeing the projects. The business is definitely there. Understood. And just to get it slightly clearer, uh, let's say three years from now, if generators, motors, and services would be three separate segments, would motor be number two or number three as things stand right now? Two to three years from now, two to three years from now, I mean, it's, I uh, yeah. you, you were suggesting that you were reasonable. Motors yeah. Motors is definitely be number two and services and this is number three, for sure. We've got that. Uh, those are my questions. Thank you and all the very best to you, sir. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you very much.
As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Nikhil Kumar for closing comments. Yeah, thank you all for joining our conference call. If you have any further questions, please, please feel free to get in touch with uh, Varalakshmi or Vinay. Uh, we look forward to interacting with all of you in the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> On behalf of TD Power Systems Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your line. Thank you.